What if I told you you could get a mountain bike? Wait, a reliable mountain bike that'll give you a boost of confidence out on the trails. A bike that you can upgrade as your skills and confidence grows. A bike that'll let you ride any green, blue, and even black diamond trail. And what if I told you it'll cost you less than a thousand bucks? Oh, come on! In this video, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I've scoured the internet and today I'm gonna give you my top five budget hardtails. The absolute best bang for buck bikes I could find. I'm gonna be including a couple honorable mentions at the end as well, so stick around. Now just like your budget, I also respect your time. If you're just after a specific bike on my list, there'll be timestamps in the description so you can forward to those. Also, I've included links to where you can buy one and have it shipped directly to your front door. Yes! The first bike starts right here. But if you want to stay with me for a minute, I just want to talk about the word budget, exactly what I'm looking for when compiling bikes for this list, and why I'm making this video in the first place. Since starting the channel, I've realized that a lot of you are either new to mountain biking or looking at joining the sport and making that all-time important purchase of a first bike without totally breaking the bank. You ask tons of questions, what's the best bike, what do you recommend? Many of you guys have been asking for this, so here it is. Also as new riders, you're also going to want to learn tips on how to get better at riding trails and also how to maintain, fix, and upgrade that bike of yours in the future. All things that I cover here on this channel. To give you a little context and confidence, I've been riding bikes for over two decades now. Woo! And over the years, I've come to realize exactly what's important in a good mountain bike. The bikes I feature in this video are not department store bikes. These are all bikes that I would confidently recommend to any of my friends that are considering joining the sport, dropping in, and shredding the trails. And let's be realistic here. The bikes on this list aren't meant to go hit up double blacks and 20 foot drops. They're gonna be great for beginners or someone maybe looking for a second bike to go hit up some tamer trails. Now let's address the thousand dollar budget. I know a lot of you guys are gonna say, well, Ben, a thousand bucks is a lot of money. And I hear you loud and clear, but this is just the cap for this list. While many bikes hover closer to the $1,000 range, I have a lot of bikes on this list that are well under, so there should be a bike for everyone. Also, I wanna stress the fact that spending five, six, seven hundred dollars on a department store bike and going out there hitting serious trails is generally not a good idea. Just go watch the hundreds of videos out there of people buying Walmart bikes and seeing if they survive their local trails. Ah! It never ends well. Do yourself a favor, if you're really tight on funds, save up for a little bit longer and get something that'll really last you. Just before counting down these bikes, I wanna let you know the criteria these bikes had to have to make it onto this list. I'm looking for a suspension fork with 100 to 140 mils of travel, hydraulic brakes. These are much more powerful than mechanical, they're reliable, and out on the trails, they offer a lot more modulation for the ultimate control. I'm prioritizing 29 inch wheels with some trail ready rubber, but I'll also take 27.5 if the rest of the bike is dialed. I wanna see a light and reliable drivetrain. That means one narrow wide chain ring up front, a great range of gears, and a derailleur with a clutch. As far as the frame goes, I'm looking for something burly with modern geometry. This is gonna help you climb with ease and descend the steepest features you can talk yourself into. Because after all, the frame is the only thing you can't change or upgrade in the future. There's three very important angles and measurements I look at. A slack head tube angle is gonna push the wheel out in front of you and help you down those steep descents. For reference, cross country bikes have a head tube angle of around 70 degrees, while modern enduro and downhill bikes hover around the 63 degree mark. Next is a seat tube angle. A steeper seat tube angle is gonna put your body weight over the cranks, putting you in a more comfortable position for climbing. Also having your weight a little further forward is gonna help you keep that front wheel on the ground on those steeper climbs. And lastly, it's the chain stay length. Shorter chain stays are gonna bring the back wheel closer to your pedals and bottom bracket, so you can easily lean back and lift that front wheel for those sick manuals or those sneaky drops. And finally, I'm making sure to stay clear of brand specific parts. The last thing you want is not being able to find a replacement part if you break something in the crash, because that brand made it for that bike that year and it's just not available anymore. And with all that out of the way, let's start counting down my top five budget hardtails. At number five, we've got the Diamondback line. This do-it-all hardtail splits the line between stability and playfulness. The modern aluminum frame with the tapered head tube is kitted out with parts that are just as impressive. 
An SR Suntour XCR fork with 120 mils of travel will help you track the ground while rolling on 27.5 Diamondback double wall rims wrapped in 2.35V rubber tires. The fork is coil sprung, easily adjustable, and has a lockout. The alloy cranks are mated to a 30 tooth narrow wide chain ring, and your chain will never fall off thanks to this chain guide with roller. Outback, the drivetrain is a 9 speed Shimano Acera with an 11 to 36 tooth cassette. Not the widest range of gears here, but Shimano is top notch when it comes to precision and reliability. The controls start off with the 750 millimeter wide Diamondback bars that have a 15 millimeter rise. These attach to a nice short 45 millimeter stem affectionately called the Shorty. You'll have no problem stopping thanks to the Shimano MT200's hydraulic brakes that are biting on to a 160 millimeter rotor in the rear and a big 180 mil rotor up front. Finally, you're gonna be comfortable on the climb sitting on a Diamondback sinker saddle and seat post. The geometry on this bike is modern but slightly conservative. It has a 68 degree head tube angle, 73 degree seat tube angle, and nice short 430 mil chainstays. The pros on this bike are definitely gonna be the brakes with a big rotor out front as well as the chain guide. Having full confidence that you won't be dropping a chain in the chatter is great and nobody's ever complained about too much braking power. The cons on this bike is the smallish gear ratio, as well as some people might prefer rolling on 29s instead of 27.5 wheels the line comes with. The line is available directly from Diamondback's website for 900 US dollars. Sliding into the number four spot is the Kona Lava Dome. As Kona describes it, the Lava Dome is like your best friend, but in bike form. This bike will eat up whatever you put in its path. Well, almost everything. The aluminum frame has a tapered head tube, internal cable routing, a low standover, and is available in two different colors. The Samox crankset is mated to a 28 tooth chain ring that'll make climbing in the granny gear a breeze. Out back, you're gonna find a nine speed micro shift advent clutch derailleur, as well as an 11 to 46 tooth cassette. These are all controlled up front by a micro shift advent shifter. It all rolls on a strong set of 29 inch Alex rims wrapped in 2.25 WTB Trail Boss or Maxxis Raycons, depending on supply. The brakes are Tektro HDM 275 hydraulic disc brakes with 160 mil rotor in the rear and 180 out front. Nice. There's no real specs on the bar and stem here, but they look to be decently wide with a nice little rise, and the stem looks reasonably short. For a suspension fork, it lists two options, the Suntour XCR32 or the RST Omega Coil. Both have 100 mils of travel, and both are great choices for a bike in this category. The Lava Dome's geo numbers are also respectable. The 68 degree head tube angle will keep it nimble around those tight switchbacks. The 75 degree seat tube angle will put you in a really good position for climbing. And the slightly long 450 mil chain stays will keep the bike planted and stable at speeds. The pros on this bike are the beautiful frame and color options, the great gearing ratio, and the Tektro hydraulic brakes. The cons for me is not having an air fork, and as a rider who likes the steep terrain, the steeper head tube angle of 68 degrees is not confidence inspiring, but it puts you in a great position for flatter terrain. You can pick up this Kona for 930 US dollars. Rounding off the top three, the Vetus Nucleus VR. Sold out of chain reaction cycles in the UK, this is an amazing example of bang for buck. The platform this bike is built on has won MBR's Hardtail of the Year four times now. They have a black that kind of has a brown tint to it, and they also have a really nice dark blue. You also get a choice for wheel size. The 29er comes with a 100 millimeter fork, and the 27.5 comes with 120 mils to travel. The suspension is brought to you by the SR Suntour SCR32 Air Fork, which is easily adjustable for any rider weight. It slides into a tapered steer tube to help with stability and opens up options for upgrades in the future. The drivetrain is a box four one by eight speed with 11 to 42 tooth cassette. Not the widest range of gears here, but it's simple to use and the clutch derailleur keeps the chain from slapping around on those chattery sections. It rolls on stiff 30 millimeter wide tubeless ready rims and 2.25 Maxxis Ardent tires. The tires aren't tubeless ready, but a great start with their sticky compound. For controls, you've got the nuke proof Neutron 760 millimeter wide bars with a 25 millimeter rise and a nice short 50 mil Vita stem. These put you in a great position to start honing your skills. The saddle and seat post are nuke proof as well. No dropper posts here
at this price range, but the frame has internal routing for that in the future. And to slow you down, Vetus equipped the Nucleus with Tektro hydraulic brakes. They bite onto a 160mm rotor in the rear and a 180mm rotor in the front. The Geo on this bike is also very good. 67 degree head tube angle, 73 degree seat tube angle, and 439mm chainstays make it playful and confidence inspiring. The pros on this bike are the air fork, the brakes, and the really nice geo numbers. The cons are the non-tubeless ready tires and no dropper post. But these are all things you can upgrade in the future. This thing is dialed and a really smart buy for someone tied on funds. Barely missing the top spot and landing at number two is the Polygon Extrata 7. At 999, the Polygon Extrata 7 taps out the budget but comes with absolutely everything you need. This light hydroform frame features a tapered head tube for stiffness up front, internal cable routing, a threaded bottom bracket, and a boost 12 by 148 mil rear through axle. The small size comes with 27.5 wheels, large and above 29ers, and as for medium, you actually get a choice. You can choose either one. A big highlight on this bike is the 120 millimeter Suntour XCR32 air fork. The air spring makes it super easy to adjust for riders of any weight, or if you just want to stiffen it up to ride the jumps. It also has preload and rebound adjustment, as well as a lockout for climbing. Finally, it's attached to the front wheel with a 15 mil through axle for the ultimate in safety and stiffness. The drivetrain on this beast of a bike starts off with a Shimano Dior crankset, mated to a 32 tooth narrow wide chain ring and BSA 73 mil threaded bottom bracket. Out back, you've got a Shimano Dior Shadow Plus 12 speed derailleur, a Shimano Dior 10 to 51 tooth 12 speed hyperglide cassette, and it's all controlled by a reliable Shimano Dior 12 speed shifter. This is the best drivetrain on this top five by far. The 2.25 WTB Trail Boss comp tires are not tubeless ready, but the Entity XL2 double wall alloy rims are. They also have a 30 mil internal width, making them super stiff. The set of brakes the Extrata 7 comes with are perfect for a beginner bike like this. They're the Shimano M201 hydraulic brakes with 160 millimeter rotor front and rear. These brakes are strong, reliable, and easy to maintain. The bar and stem combo are entity experts and so are the saddle and seat tube. The bars look fairly flat here, but the stem looks nice and short, placing you in the perfect position for descending. And the good news just keeps rolling with this bike as we look at the geo numbers. It has a fairly slack 67 degree head tube angle, a nice steep 75 degree seat tube angle, and super short 435 mil chain stays. The pros on the Extrata are the through axles front and rear, the Suntour air fork, the amazing 12 speed Shimano drivetrain, and Shimano brakes. I'm really digging hard here to find cons on this bike, but if I had to change anything at all, it would probably be the flat bars and I'd make the head tube just a smidge slacker. But that's just me. These might be perfect for you. The Polygon Extrata 7 is a great bike with a sweet build and an amazing price. And it's all available from Bikes Online. And my number one pick for the perfect budget hardtail under $1,000 is the Marin San Quentin 1. Designed in part by slopestyle rider Matt Jones, the San Quentin is made for people that ride hard and play hard. Marin describes it as the one bike for every style of riding. This burly but lightweight aluminum frame features internal cable routing to give it that sleek look and reduce maintenance. It's available in two different colors and also has, in my opinion, the perfect geometry for a hardtail that likes to go up and down. The 120mm travel SR Suntour XCM fork is not air sprung, but has a lockout and a 15mm bolt on through axle. The cranks are Marin's forged alloy with a 32 tooth narrow wide one by chain ring to keep it clean, light and simple. The cassette is a Sunrace 9 speed 11 to 46 tooth. It's simple and has great range. It's all controlled up front by a micro shift advent shifter and nine speed micro shift advent clutch derailleur for that crisp and quiet shifting. The San Quentin one has Tektro M275 hydraulic disc brakes with 160 mil rotor in the back and 180 mil rotor in the front. This bike comes with 27.5 Marin double wall alloy tubeless ready rims and big 2.6 inch V tires with MPC compound for that extra grip on the trails. 
Rounding out the build are a set of super wide 780mm Marin bars with a 28mm rise, a Marin 45mm stem, and a Marin Speed Concept saddle and seat post. What helped this bike get to my top spot was really its geometry. And like I said earlier, the frame is really the only part of the bike you can't change. With that said, this bike has the slackest head tube angle out of the bunch at 65 degrees. A comfortable 75 degree seat tube angle and the shortest chain stays on the list at 425 millimeters. This will make the Marin easy to manual and great at navigating those tight trails. I really think Matt and the good people at Marin really nailed it with this bike. The pros are definitely gonna be the frame's perfect geometry, simple gearing and powerful brakes. If I had to change anything on this bike, I'd probably put some tubeless ready tires and save up just a little bit to get an air fork. If you want to pick up a Marin San Quentin 1, it's available from Bikes Online and right now it's on sale for under $1,000. There's a lot to choose from out there and I couldn't fit them all in my top five. So as promised, here are some honorable mentions. The Voodoo Bazango. For pros, this bike seems to have everything on paper and an amazing value at 925 US dollars. You get 120 millimeters Sun Tour air fork, Shimano Dior brakes and drivetrain, 29 inch wheels, and great geometry numbers. The only downside is I can't find out where to get one other than their own website. Could be a little unnerving to someone shelling out a thousand dollars and not buying from a reputable online bike store. So it's just a little hard to recommend it for you guys. Maybe I can ask Voodoo to send me one as a review bike. I can then let you guys know how the ordering and shipping works as well as how the bike really is. The Marin Bobcat Trail 4. For pros and cons, when compared to the San Quentin, the Bobcat Trail has 29 inch wheels, but a steeper head tube angle at 67 degrees. I also didn't want to put two Marins in the top five, but this at 849 is still a great choice and available from Bikes Online. The next bikes are from the big three. The Giant Talon at $980. Pros here are going to be a Shimano Dior drivetrain and Tektro hydraulic brakes. And the cons is that you only get 80 millimeters of travel in the 29er version. The Specialized Rock Hopper Comp 29, available for $1,000 US dollars. The good things on this bike here is that it's available in four different colors and has SRAM level hydraulic disc brakes with 180-160 combo. The downsides, however, is that the 11-42 tooth cassette gives you limited gearing ratio and the Geo is very cross country. That's great if that's what you want to ride, but it's going to be a little sketchy if you want to follow your pals down some steeper terrain. The Trek Marlin 7. This thing is available in six different sizes, three different colors, and has a Shimano drivetrain and brakes. The downsides here and the main reason it didn't make the top five is the price. It retails for $1,029 and it's geo numbers. The head tube angle on this thing is almost 70 degrees. Uh, not for me. If it's a Trek you absolutely want, my recommendation is just to save up a little longer and get that Trek Roscoe. That is a sick bike. Starting out with a budget bike is a great idea. But what if you've been mountain biking for a while now and you have more than a thousand bucks to spend? If you wanna see my top five best hardtails, click on this video right here. I'll show you the absolute best serious front suspension only mountain bikes money can buy. I'll see you there.